Hello. It gives me great pleasure to tell you a little bit about the uh, epilepsy surgery programs here at USC, which is um, unique in that we take a very integrated approach. I'm uh, Charles Liu. I am a professor of neurological surgery, neurology, urology, biomedical engineering, and biokinesiology here at uh, USC. I also serve as the director of the USC Neuro Restoration Center and director of epilepsy uh, surgical programs and also of the USC Epilepsy Care Consortium um, at USC. Uh, one of my other important roles is uh, that of uh, being the uh, chair of uh, neurosurgery and orthopedics and chief of innovation um, and research at Rancho Los Amigos National Rehabilitation Center. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the goals of epilepsy surgery here at uh, USC and what the goals of our uh, overall programs are. Uh, our programs uh, goals uh, can be considered in, uh, in threefold. The first one would be to provide the most advanced surgical care and treatment for epilepsy. The uh, second goal would be to uh, provide um, a mechanism by which the public health dimensions of epilepsy across Southern California and beyond are addressed. And we do this through programs and education. And finally, to serve as a uh, platform for epilepsy and uh, neuroscience research. So let's talk a little bit about the surgical treatment of epilepsy. When one talks about treating epilepsy through surgery, we can think of it as falling into four general categories. The uh, first category would be uh, those uh, surgical um, procedures that relate to um, invasive EEG diagnostics. A second would be uh, microsurgical resections of uh, seizure foci. Uh, third, uh, which is a very important technique now um, that's uh, gaining uh, wider uh, spread acceptance and certainly uh, integrated into our programs both on the adult and children's side, those related to um, laser uh, interstitial thermotherapy, which is a minimally invasive way of ablating seizure foci. And finally, very importantly, the concepts of neuromodulation and neurostimulation. So when would any patient need uh, invasive EEG diagnostics. As we all know, uh, EEG is typically done with um, electrodes uh, that are placed on the scalp of, uh, of a patient. Um, if the uh, scalp electrodes and the traditional EEGs are incapable and not precise enough in terms of uh, localizing the seizure foci, then we can get much closer. And we can do this by uh, surgical means. Uh, one way would be to do a craniotomy and put the grids directly on the cortical surface. Uh, other ways, um, again, uh, these are techniques that uh, are done at a very high level here at USC, involve the placement of depth electrodes through uh, stereotactic uh, means, and we can do this either through traditional frame-based systems or also using uh, frameless robotic systems such as a ROSA robot. When a seizure focus has been identified and after a group of uh, neurologists, neurosurgeons, neuropsychologists and a multidisciplinary group have decided that uh, a uh, surgical focus is amenable to uh, resection uh, to um, control the seizures, then this can be achieved through either traditional microsurgical means or it can be achieved through uh, laser uh, interstitial thermotherapy, which is a, a new strategy that is gaining wider spread acceptance uh, across uh, the uh, world. Uh, in this uh, strategy, um, a stereotactic laser is placed uh, into the seizure focus and under direct uh, MRI visualization, the seizure, can be, seizure focus can be ablated. Neuromodulation and neurostimulation, again, very, very important now in the surgical treatment of epilepsy. Uh, the first uh, platform for neurostimulation is the um, vagus nerve stimulator, and uh, this is uh, shown here on the uh, image on the, uh, the left of the slide. Uh, in this uh, strategy, a um, uh, coil is placed on the uh, cervical trunk of the vagus nerve. It's in the neck and a pulse generator is then attached to this coil and placed uh, in a uh, subcutaneous pocket, uh, typically in the anterior aspect of the uh, pectoral region. 
And uh, through this um, uh, platform, uh, stimulation is applied to the vagus nerve to control seizures. The uh, second uh, uh, neuromodulation platform that uh, is um, uh, now very important in the surgical management of epilepsy is that of um, the uh, responsive neurostimulator, uh, the Neuropace. And uh, this works in a way that uh, is, um, in fact, quite different uh, from the uh, vagus nerve stimulator. Uh, in this strategy, the uh, electrodes are actually placed on the seizure foci themselves, and the pulse generator is actually embedded in the skull. And here you see in the middle image uh, an example of, um, a, vagus, uh, of a, um, RNS, uh, a neuropace RNS implanted. And finally, um, the, the most uh, recent um, platform to get uh, FDA approval is the um, deep brain stimulator uh, for uh, epilepsy where the anterior nucleus of the thalamus is t targeted. And uh, this is now starting to become a useful tool for the uh, treatment of epilepsy. I want to spend uh, a few minutes and just uh, talk about the, um, the uh, unique approach that the USC epilepsy programs uh, have taken to really address the uh, public health dimensions of epilepsy. Um, we just talked about all the wonderful and advanced ways that uh, we can control seizures um, through uh, medical and surgical means. We focused a lot on the surgical aspects of it. but what good are these strategies if you can't um, get these treatments to a large number of people? And I think one of the biggest challenges in epilepsy programs across the country and the world is the failure of these programs to uh, be easily accessible to uh, large numbers of patients that need these programs. And in this way, uh, there's a lot of concern uh, locally, uh, regionally, and nationally that the systems of care for epilepsy really fail to address the public health dimensions of epilepsy. And we, we have to understand that epilepsy is one of the most common neurological disorders worldwide, and surgery is a very effective treatment for uh, many types of epilepsies. So in order to address this challenge, um, a group of us here at USC uh, have uh, created uh, what we consider to be a patient-centered ecosystem for epilepsy care. I'd like to spend just a few minutes and tell you about that. So the epilepsy, uh, USC Epilepsy Care Consortium is a unique uh, partnership of many uh, epilepsy centers, starting from Central California all the way down to South Orange County. Uh, the um, Care Consortium was created primarily to integrate the healthcare ecosystem for epilepsy care across our region. The, there are nine uh, participating centers uh, in the USC Epilepsy Care Consortium, and I think it's important to acknowledge each one. Of course, the, one of the, uh, the academic anchor uh, for the care consortium is the, um, the USC Comprehensive Epilepsy Center, which is based here at uh, USC Keck Hospital. Uh, the uh, anchor on the pediatric side is uh, Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, which is also a NAEC level four center like the uh, Keck program. The next program I'd like to uh, acknowledge is uh, Rancho Los Amigos National Rehabilitation Center and LA County USC Department of Health Services programs, which is a very special program that was established by us many years ago, and at the time was the first and still remains the only uh, NAEC level four center that is um, in a uh, safety net hospital. The next programs that, that I'd like to talk about are three uh, programs that are based in uh, private uh, health systems, the first one being Hogue Hospital down in Newport Beach in Orange County. Uh, Mission uh, Hospital in uh, Mission Viejo, and uh, newest uh, member of the uh, private uh, affiliates, which is uh, Santa Barbara Cottage on the Central Coast. Uh, one of the most underserved areas in the state of California is the Central Valley, and uh, we're very proud to have uh, helped start a program up in uh, Bakersfield at Kern Medical, which 
is the first um, NAEC um, certified uh, epilepsy center in the Central Valley for adults between uh, Sacramento and Los Angeles. Uh, joining Kern in the next uh, months to the year will be uh, Quia Delta Healthcare District up in Visalia. And of course, the uh, primary resource for all pediatric care in the uh, central part of California at Valley Children's Medical Center, which has a NAAC level four center. So these um, nine centers form the uh, USC Epilepsy Care Consortium. Uh, this uh, large network of doc practitioners, doctors, affiliated experts meet uh, weekly in a, a surgical conference uh, and these conferences have really now largely moved to uh, virtual platforms but even before um, the uh, social uh, distancing requirements of uh, our uh, current um, uh, year uh, we had built in the IT infrastructure to connect all the doctors and nurses and affiliated experts for epilepsy care across this entire geography. Uh, it's interesting to point out that uh, if you take all of the centers and put them together, uh, they represent uh, almost one-third of all the epilepsy centers uh, in, in our state. The um, Epilepsy Care Consortium gives us a uh, unique reach with high visibility across Southern California and beyond, and we're able to reach patients and uh, uh, advocacy groups. Uh, the photo in the middle is uh, a big event in Orange County where we were featured, and the photo on the uh, right-hand side of the slide is the um, uh, Care and Cure Foundation where our center was, uh, again, uh, featured as uh, uh, really providing services uh, to um, very underserved um, patients. The um, program has uh, been quite visible in our local media uh, and uh, publications, uh, but interestingly and uh, very significantly, uh, our efforts to integrate the healthcare ecosystem for epilepsy care has gained uh, national attention and um, uh, was uh, featured in uh, in uh, a, a publication by the uh, National Academies called the uh, called Epilepsy Across the Spectrum, which was uh, uh, we were represented uh, very well by uh, Dr. Christy Heck, who's the um, medical director of our uh, USC uh, Epilepsy uh, Center here at CAC. Want to talk about uh, one of the final roles of uh, the Epilepsy Center and uh, the USC Epilepsy uh, programs are really. Um, serve as a very important component of the USC uh, Neuro Restoration Center, which is a unique research center that aims to um, develop transformative treatments for the restoration of neurological function. And we do this through a combination of strategies that include uh, repair, replace, and optimize, uh, where we um, take the uh, expertise and resources of neurosurgery, neurology, psychiatry, uh, neurorehabilitation, neural engineering, computational neuroscience, and regenerative medicine, and we put together these resources to develop uh, transformative treatments. Uh, this is a very um, uh, complex process that um, involves uh, research, validation, clinical integration, and practice change. The participants are really myriad. And the goals are quite different. Uh, and you see here on this slide a list of the goals that include um, techniques and discovery and regulatory approval and uh, acceptable practice into expected practice. And these are all the things that the USD Neuro Restoration Center does uh, to develop these transformative uh, strategies for the comprehensive restoration of neurological function. So these research programs have been uh, highly visible uh, locally, nationally, internationally. Here, of course, is uh, uh, a uh, human brain computer interface program uh, collaboration with uh, Dr. Richard Anderson at uh, the California Institute of Technology. And uh, our uh, study subject and uh, patient advisor to the uh, USC uh, Neuro Restoration Center, Eric Sorto. And here, what we did with this project was we put uh, micro electrode arrays, intracortical arrays, that decoded uh, Eric's thoughts that allowed him to move robotic devices. We also work at the level of uh, 
electrical cortography based uh, brain computer interface and uh, uh, the um, epilepsy center and epilepsy programs, particularly at uh, USC Keck and Rancho Los Amigos, uh, contribute uh, significantly to the development of a uh, bi-directional brain controlled robot exoskeleton that is designed to allow paralyzed patients, people who are paralyzed from the waist down, to be able to walk and control the robot with just their thoughts. Southern California has really uh, become a uh, one of the epicenters for neuroprosthetics research and uh, uh, the USC epilepsy uh, programs and uh, Neuro Restoration Center and uh, all of the um, combined clinical and research resources um, have really contributed um, in a very uh, significant way to the uh, evolution of, uh, of our region as far as neuroprosthetics is concerned. In fact, in uh, 2019, um, we uh, helped organize a uh, short course for neuroprosthetics and uh, brain machine interfaces and uh, many of the, um, uh, the key experts uh, presenting uh, at, the, uh, at this course uh, were collaborators of the um, USC Neuro Restoration Center uh, as well as uh, of the epilepsy uh, programs. Uh, it's very important to uh, make sure that uh, the work that we do uh, ultimately reaches out to the uh, patients and uh, you know even our research programs we have very extensive um, patient outreach programs. Uh, this is uh, an example of this uh, shown here uh, at Rancho Los Amigos uh, last year in 2019. Um, we had uh, essentially all of these um, uh, study subjects who've participated in this transformative research uh, speak in a moderated uh, fashion uh, to um, an audience of their peers and this was uh, very well received and it will be an ongoing program for us. I uh, want to keep in mind again this is uh, talking about the epilepsy uh, surgical programs and uh, um, it's uh, we're really proud of the fact that Rancho Los Amigos is the uh, first and only NAEC level 4 certified epilepsy center in a safety net hospital. So I'd like to just acknowledge uh, the uh, folks that, uh, the experts, doctors, uh, that uh, are uh, playing uh, primary leadership roles in the epilepsy programs here at USC. And of course, uh, up, you, up at the top, you see the neurosurgeons, including uh, myself, uh, Dr. Jonathan Russin, Dr. Brian Lee, Dr. Darren Lee on the adult side. And uh, on the uh, pediatric side, you see Dr. Mark Krieger and uh, Dr. Jason Chu over at CHLA. We're talking about surgical programs, but surgical programs can't exist without uh, neurologists. This is truly an inter, uh, integrated program and an interdisciplinary program, and I think it's really important to acknowledge Dr. Christy Heck, who is the uh, neurologist, uh, epileptologist that leads the medical side of things on the adult side, and um, Dr. Debbie Holder, who is a epileptologist and leads the programs uh, at uh, uh, CHLA. So, uh, to summarize, uh, it's uh, been great to give uh, the audience a, an introduction to uh, epilepsy surgery at USC. As I said at the beginning, uh, this is a unique approach in that it is a fully integrated approach and the levels of integration uh, exist across geography where our programs extend from uh, Central California all the way down to South Orange County and all points in between. The programs are integrated across all different healthcare delivery models including academic, community, adult, children, um, public sector, private sector, urban and uh, rural programs that um, uh, are all important to, uh, to um, tie together to take care of uh, epilepsy patients. We're very proud of the fact that uh, our program is integrated across the age spectrum. Epilepsy is not a adult disease or a pediatric disease. Uh, many uh, of our patients uh, have epilepsy as children or develop the risk factors for epilepsy as children and then end up uh, as adults and uh, having a program that is integrated across the age spectrum, not only in the Los Angeles and Orange County areas, but even in Central California is a very important facet of our programs. And finally, we're very uh, uh, proud to say that uh, the three missions of uh, USC Keck School of Medicine, 
Uh, and our programs are uh, fully integrated across each of these three missions, and these missions being patient care, education, and uh, research.